Hey guys, welcome to the Command Valley. My name is Caleb and you are watching or listening to a deck tech for one of my favorite personal commanders that I have been playing for many, many years. And that is Thromok the Insatiable. Thromok the Insatiable is a 0, zero for 3, 1 red and a green. So far, no bueno, but he has Devour X, where X is the number of creatures devoured this way. So Devour says, as this enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This creature enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it for each of those creatures. This is the only creature that I'm aware of that has Devour X. Mycoloth, for example, has Devour 2. So when Mycoloth enters the battlefield, you can choose to sacrifice any number of creatures. If it's one, it'll get two counters. If it's two, it'll get four counters. In the case of Thromok, though, it's if he devours one, he gets one. Two, it becomes four tokens. Three is nine. Four is 16. You see where I'm going with this. Five is 25. If he devours six creatures, it's 36. If he devours seven, it's 49 plus one plus one counters. If he devours eight, he is a 64-64 when he enters the battlefield. One thing that's important to note about Devour is that if he were to be countered, you don't have to sacrifice the creatures that you would have sacrificed to his Devour ability. So if he if he doesn't leave the stack and, and enter the battlefield because Devour specifically says as this enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. If he gets countered, you don't have to sacrifice creatures. But if he doesn't get countered and all of your creatures that you currently have in play die from a board wipe, for example, in response to him being cast, then he's obviously going to enter as a 0-0 and die. So just be careful with that. So clearly the best way to take advantage of Thromok is to make tons of creatures for him to eat. And then of course, feed them to him so that when he enters the battlefield, he is huge. You'll usually be aiming to devour six to eight creatures, depending on your opponent's life totals at the time that you cast him. And that is why most of this deck focuses on making lots of token creatures. There are cards like Awakening Zone and Scute Swarm and Tendershoot Dryad that make many tokens consistently over time. Hanwar Garrison also makes tokens each turn, but it has to attack and Cranko Mob Boss will double the number of goblins you have each round. Dragon Broodmother will create little baby dragons on each person's upkeep, just like Tendershoot Dryad with its sapperlings. However, these tokens can also pack quite a punch because they have flying and devour too. Other token makers like Hordling Outburst, Siege Gang Commander, Avenger of Zendikar, and Deranged Hermit make lots of tokens all at once, but only once. Just a side note, if you are weird like me and you're still playing Deranged Hermit, but not Deep Forest Hermit, you should probably fix that or just play both cause squirrels. You can never have too many squirrels. You also have access to cards that are both interaction and token makers. Artifact Mutation is a classic that destroys an artifact and then makes you a number of sapperlings equal to that artifact's mana value. A new card that I have absolutely fallen in love with from the latest commander decks is Pest Infestation. It's a sorcery that costs X, X, and a green, and it destroys up to X target artifacts or enchantments. Then you make twice X, one, one black and green pests that gain you life when they die. This card is so sweet. If you pay three mana into it, you get to destroy one thing or nothing and make two pests. If you pay five to cast it, you can destroy zero, one, or two things, and you'll make four pests. Trust me, do not sleep on this one. This card is awesome. If you've got these next enchantments, I would run at the very least two of them. If not, no biggie. They're not vital to our plan. They just make it a little bit easier to play throw mock. Branching evolution will double the number of plus one plus one counters that you place on your creatures. So if throw mock devours four creatures when it comes into play, 
he'll end up being a 32-32 instead of a 16-16. Next is Parallel Lives, which desperately, desperately needs a reprint. Please, Watsi, reprint this card for us. This enchantment essentially just doubles your token production. If you were going to create four squirrels with a deep forest hermit, or if you were going to create four squirrels, you'll instead create eight squirrels. And last but not least, we've of course got Doubling Season, which for just one more mana than Parallel Lives doubles all counters and all tokens you create. So basically branching evolution and Parallel Lives put together. Again, these are not super vital for the deck. They can make things a lot easier, especially rebuilding after board wipes or just getting Thromok out sooner, but they're not super vital. So, what do you do with a giant Helion and his pile of plus one plus one counters after you've successfully dropped him on the board? Well, you try to win on the same exact turn. Or at least take out the biggest threat at the table. Chariot of Victory and Haunted Cloak are perfect for giving Thromok Trample and Haste, the two abilities that he wants more than anything. And if you play them earlier in the game, they both only cost one to equip. If Kedis wasn't on the menu when Thromok comes down, then he'll be sure to copy and spread the combat damage that Thromok deals, but to all of your opponents. Xanagos, God of Revels, will give Thromok haste and double his power and toughness at the beginning of combat, and Rhythm of the Wild saves your creatures from being countered and gives them riot, and you'll probably choose haste most of the time. Warstorm Surge and Terror of the Peaks will allow Thromok to instantly throw his weight and damage at any target as soon as he ETBs. It's also a good idea to run Impact Tremors and Perforos God of the Forge to take advantage of all the creature tokens that you'll be having enter the battlefield throughout the game even though they won't immediately knock someone out like Warstorm Surge plus Thromok. If those cards don't get the job done, flinging Thromox certainly will with cards like Kazul's Fury, which is also land on the other side, Thud, and Fling itself. These cards require you to sacrifice a creature to deal damage equal to its power to any target, so they are mostly here as a backup, because obviously we don't want to sacrifice our huge commander after having also sacrificed six to eight tokens just to play him. Soul's Fire is basically a fling that doesn't cause you to sacrifice Thromok. And now we've made it to the Holy Grail, the best card in this deck, your ultimate win con, the card that when countered will make grown men cry, Chandra's Ignition. For three and two red, Chandra's Ignition is a sorcery that says, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. Boom. This is the ultimate goal with Thromok. Kill everyone all at once. Achievement unlocked. Bleep bloop. If you haven't liked this video yet, hit that like button for Chandra's Ignition and subscribe. Also be sure to join our Discord, which we have recently opened up to the public. Anyone and everyone can join. This doesn't affect our patrons. They still have access to a ton of channels and a ton of extra perks. So if you don't want to just get one channel on the Discord and want to join our Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash commandvalley. Now with all that out of the way, let's go over some of the more interesting rampant card draw cards that you can run in a Thromok deck. Cryptolith Rite is an enchantment that gives your creatures the ability to tap and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And it's not strange to see eight or more creatures on your board by the early to mid game. The turn that you cast Thromok, you can just tap the six to eight creatures for a mana each and end up casting a virtually free Thromok with mana to spare. You can do the same with Sitinal Hierophants that gives all of your creatures the ability to tap for a green and Growing Rites of Itlamok, which you'll easily be able to flip into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun, which taps at a green mana for each creature you control. You can of course also run Gaia's Cradle if you have one, or if you don't have one, if your playgroup is okay with proxies. The only other comment that I'll make about the ramp in this deck is that I rarely like to run more than one or two ramp creatures like Wood Elves, or even the Hierophants uh, that I mentioned before, because there are generally more solid options like Rampant Growth and Cultivate that just get you lands that are more likely to stick around. 
unless I can replay them, which we're not going to do in this deck. However, it is important to remember that your creatures that ramp you in this deck can also be used as fodder to feed Thromok. As for card draw, these aren't the best colors in the world for efficient card draw, but we've got some pretty decent cards, like Toski, Bearer of Secrets, who is sure to draw you some cards, especially if your playgroup doesn't play super creature-heavy decks. Idol of Oblivion can easily draw you a few cards throughout the game, and Shamanic Revelation has the potential to draw you quite a lot of cards. However, Return of the Wild Speaker and Rishkar's Expertise can draw you half your deck or more with Thromok out. Rishkar's Expertise has won me many games with the card that I get to cast for free after drawing 64 cards, which is usually Chandra's Ignition. Despite the power of Rishkar's Expertise, Skullclamp is the most powerful card in the deck when it comes to draw. It's a must-have in the deck. Now it's time for a little extra, and that is Beastmaster Ascension. Most of this deck revolves around Thromok, and that is great because he's our commander, and he's the whole reason we built the deck, but one of the most important aspects when it comes to building an EDH deck is the ability to win without your commander. We talked a little bit about Impact Tremors and Perforos, and they are good examples of other cards that can run away with the game or at least finish off some opponents towards the end of the game that don't rely on Thromok. Beastmaster Ascension is another card that allows you to do that by giving all of your creatures plus five plus five once you've unlocked it, of course, with the quest counters you get from attacking. You could start the turn with an army of 1-1s, one drop this enchantment, then swing with 10 little 1-1s one and immediately turn them all into 6-6s six out of nowhere. Now, for an extra extra, my favorite new card that I've recently added to the deck is the Ozolith. It is a legendary artifact that costs one to cast, and it makes it so that whenever one of your creatures leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, you can put those counters onto the Ozolith for safekeeping. Then, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you can move all of them to any creature. This guarantees that your hard-earned plus one plus one counters from Thromok never completely disappear, even if you have to fling him or if somebody removes him. You can just put them on your 0-1 plant token the very next turn and win with a plant instead of your giant Helion. The Ozolith is absolutely awesome and another must have in this deck. All right, you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. This video was sponsored by Game Grid Lehigh. You can find the link to their website in the description below. It is also an affiliate link, so shopping there also helps out our channel. So thank you so much for doing so. Please be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Those links will be in the description as well. And if you haven't yet, like this video and subscribe. Once again, our Discord is open to everyone, so please feel free to join. We love hanging out with our patrons and other supporters there. And speaking of our patrons, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.